Hello Year 9 and welcome to today's uh, lesson on a food investigation task. So today's learning objectives, we're going to know the purpose um, of food investigations in food and nutrition, um, to understand how to start and research a food investigation, um, and to create um, a mind map um, of a given of the given uh, task research um, and plan and investigation. So we're going to be looking at a task and then researching and then putting that into um, an annotated um, investigation. So what is a food investigation? So a food investigation involves investigating and understanding how ingredients in food work and why. Basically, this just means we look at a particular food or an ingredient and then unravel it, look at it, how is it working? What is it doing in food? Why is it in there? Um, what is it complementing or adding to? Looking at the molecular structure of this particular food. So this is what the investigation essentially is uh, doing. It's completed um, so through research, practical experimentation, and then evaluating it. So what this is saying is when we look at a task, um, of whatever food that we want to look at, we research that particular food to the point where you understand it a lot more. You then carry out the investigation um, to see whether you are um, correct or whether your research stands up to what you found, and then you evaluate it, and then you say, oh, well, it did work, it didn't work, and so on. Um, and nearly all food that you buy, all food that we buy within supermarkets, at restaurants and so on, has been put through this process. There are reasons why food tastes amazing um, in certain places. Um, it's been put through a process. It's understood how this um, product works and it's used to the advantage um, within supermarkets and restaurants. Um, also, the reason why we do this in year nine is to show that what what you will be doing in year 11. So this a food investigation task in year 11 goes towards 15 percent of your final GCSE grade. So it's um, it, it complements a, a piece of coursework. So this coursework lasts about one to two months. Um, so and it goes towards 15 percent of your final GCSE grade. So it's very important. Um, so food investigation is showing, um, as we previously kind of uh, looked at, is the, the chemical properties of ingredients. Um, and we're not doing it today, but it includes a hypothesis and um, as to what you think will happen out of your research, but we're not doing that today. So your food investigation task that you will be doing today, or um, yes, what you'll be looking at with your research is investigate the functional properties of raising agents in baked scones. So you'll be given this is your aim um, and this is your investigation. So investigate the functional properties of raising agents in baked scones. So the way to start this is by um, researching. By researching, you're firstly analyzing the task. The task being will investigate the functional properties of raising agents in baked scones. You're highlighting these key words. Key words in this case are investigate functional properties, raising agents, and baked scones. Because if you just read that sentence as it is, or read that um, investigation as it is, it, sometimes it just doesn't make sense. You need to break it down to make it um, seem more, um, to, to make it, uh, to make sense of it. Um, and the first thing you do through in, in, in this stage to help um, understand it further is to produce a mind map, to explore and identify what these key words mean. So as an example, the mind map example here, you would be putting your task in the middle. So again, coming back to your task, this is what you're doing today. Investigate the functional properties of raising agents in baked scones. So that goes in the middle. And then you'll be going, right, well, what does investigate actually mean? So investigate, so look at, so go online, use books, uh, uh, newspapers, whatever you need or whatever you would like to, to find out, well, what does this word actually mean? So again, you're breaking down this task. Again, what are raising agents? What are they? Functional properties, what does this mean? What does functional mean? What does properties mean? And baked scones, what exactly are they? Now, I'm not asking at this stage in a mind map to be giving loads and loads of sentences. This is basically, so you can kind of see in the background anyway with the mind map example, you're kind of just giving like a sentence or two to, again, break down the task. 
what does investigate mean? What does raising agents mean? Functional properties, baked scones. So you're making it easier for yourself to understand. So here it's um, when you're going into your research. So from your mind map and you start your research. Um, for example, at the bottom there, it's got an example. What does investigate mean? Now I've just gone onto the dictionary and it's come up with um, carry out systematic or formal inquiry. I mean, even when you read that, it still needs that bit more research because even I read that and I go, hang on, that doesn't really explain in your own words what this what, what this means. So again, you're breaking it down for yourself. This is the whole reason for it. Um, and note at the top. So when you're researching or, or investigating, you're not copy and pasting. So even when I brought up that investigate from Google, from Google Dictionary, and you just copy that into your um, research, it doesn't work. It, and if everyone does that, then the exam board at the end of the day will look at it and go, these people have all copied, therefore they're not worth any marks. So what you're doing is you're answering in your own words. You're showing that you understand it um, by yourself. So don't allow Google. So when you research, don't allow Google or anything to come up and then that's what you're writing down. You need to be understanding it further. So you're showing that you understand it in your own words. So here is um, a helpful little list of what you can research, what you should be researching essentially in this uh, task. So one would be, so uh, sorry, so after your mind map. So afterwards you're researching about these different raising agents. Um, so research them, find them, what can you find? Um, how many different ones are there? Uh, how does each one work? Like, is it when you go into that raising agent and you look up through the research, what is it actually doing? How is it working? What, what does it do for certain products? Um, what can they be used in and why are they used in these products? So why are we using baking powder in certain foods? Why are we using bicarb? Why are we using yeast? How do they work? What are they doing? What do they do for these products? What are they made of? What's in them? So breaking it down again, breaking them down into a structure. So you're looking at them on a molecular level. You're looking at them in terms of well, what's in them that's making them do that. Again, you've got to remember that this is a food investigation. You are looking at the ins and outs of particular foods. And in this case, it's raising agents. And they can be, then, sorry, can they be used for anything else other than cooking? Is there any other things that they're used for apart from cooking that they um, attribute to? And I don't know, a little note you can put there as to why and how. And you're going to be by the end, um, once you've done all your research and so on, I'd like you to annotate it um, and present it um, in a way using pictures and diagrams. Diagrams basically annotate means using pictures and diagrams, making it look um, not just um, reams and reams of wording. I'd like you to at least put pictures and diagrams in there and an example is next. So you can see here through this research example that's within um, the book um, that is um, within Show My Homework, that link, it's in here showing you that you can use diagrams, you can use pictures. So there's a bit of research there. Um, this particular research is linked with gluten. Um, so they're trying to find out what different what uh, flowers and gluten and what gluten is found in different flowers. But they're using diagrams, they're using pictures. So you're making it more catchable to the eye. Um, there are also uh, links within the Show My Homework of, um, they're called exemplars, but they're past work that has been done by past students um, in, the, um, in year 11. And they'll give you a better idea as well of how they've um, annotated it, how they've made it look um, like they've researched and what they've used to um, annotate with diagrams and so on. Um, again, when you come back with your research, so now we're going to the research side, so I'm helping you out here. Go to this um, link on YouTube. Um, so this is linked with the exam board and he goes through um, each of the uh, raising agents um, just to give you a better, clearer idea. But then, then again, this is also research attributing towards your um, your piece of work. So the following slides that I'll go through, um, I'm not going to talk through them, but this is um, research that I've done just to show you what research you could do. So I've basically gone here is what is, you can use this, but 
I will know if you've copied and pasted it, let's put it that way. So you can use this to help towards your research and to help annotate um, your work. Um, but basically this is me going through um, what I found in terms of um, raising agents and so on. So here there's um, more videos and so on that you can look up and just see um, how it's describing what's going on with um, raising agents. You can see how I've questioned here um, and you can use these questions within your research to then again make you think how are we, uh, how can you annotate and how can you talk about raising agents and research them further. So for example yeast chemical raising agents, air, so natural raising agents, again, steam, natural raising agents. And then it goes further into how steam works within raising agents, especially within shoe pastry. So again, you can see here that this is a very molecular level of understanding of how steam works within um, within shoe pastry how is it working what's it doing how is that how is that helping the shoe pastry to rise so this kind of um, concludes what steam um, does within foods and how it works as a natural raising agent so at the end of the day, today's checklist is, I would just like from you a mind map of what this task is asking you to do. So looking back on that task, that task being investigate the functional properties of raising agents and break baked scones. Break the um, task down into those um, keywords, investigate functional properties, raising agents and baked scones, few sentences, annotate it. What do they mean? Break it down for you so that you understand it further. Then research. The task using the what do I do what do I research list so go back into that what do I research list use that list to help you um, answer those questions I would like full um, sentences no one word sentences like no and yes and so on this is your research it's showing that you understand and it requires full sentences again look at those exemplars that are attached and then present your work using the research example as a guide. Also using those exemplars that I've attached as a guide. So you can um, annotate it, you can present it however you wish, um, but as long as it has that research, it shows that you understand further um, the uh, the task. So in, how, how you're understanding um, basically the, the um, investigation and how raising agents worked and baked scones. Um, any other problems? Obviously, uh, you can contact me via my homework or um, you can contact me through email. Good luck.